Welcome to another Linley's video. Hi, I'm Warren Brand and in this episode we follow on from yesterday's adventure over Corndu, Benifan and then heading off towards Cribbon. We pick up the trail this time, having just left the summit of Penifan, heading on towards Cribbon, but diving off the path a little to stop for a coffee and snack break. This whole area is so popular that over the last 10 years or so, many of the path sections have been repaved, making the walking a little firmer, but less destructive of the lovely countryside around. As always, we stick to the paths as much as possible. Between Penifan and Cribbon is a lower, flatter area with a puddle in the middle. It's quite a sheltered spot, potentially a good overnight tent spot. Not for us tonight though, as we've got different plans. Pushing on up to the summit of Cribbon, Dan is lacking a little energy, but keeping going anyway. The summit is not very well celebrated at the top, the only mark is a simple cairn, but it's my favourite peak in the area. The views over the valley are stunning, looking ahead over Fanny Big and the curved ridge around, and back over Penny Fan and Corn Dew. I love it in any weather. Even in low visibility and mist, there is usually an eerie dark shadow where the land disappears down from the ridge path, giving the place a very significant ambience. Today we're lucky and the views are superb. Dan seems to be mesmerised by the views. Worth the struggle? Yeah, of course. There was half a notion that we would include Fanny Big on this tour, but time and energy is not in our favour, so we look fondly on in that direction and promise to return another time. Heading back, with the threat of rain and stronger winds increasing, we took the lower cut path to return around Corndu, bypassing both the summits of Penifan and Corndu. These paths are distinct, but more rutted. Following the contours mostly, we followed the route marked between points 5 and 6 on the map. Here's a good spot. Yeah. For a proper lunch stop, we found a sheltered spot out of the wind to brew up and have some food. I have a pack of fried egg and rice as a hot snack. It's a bit dry, but okay. I should have bought some hot sauce along to spice it up a bit though. Oh dear. Right, Penny Pam. Mm -hmm. Corn dew with that kind of knobbly bit on the yeah. northern side. Yeah. We had time to relax a bit and we even rested back in the sun out of the wind and dozed for a few minutes. A flurry of snow and hail hit us briefly, so it was time to head off onwards towards our night spot, somewhere near to the obelisk on the ridge north of Corndu. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, it would be great if you did. 
the extra subs kick YouTube into promoting my videos more widely and that would be lovely. Thanks to the many subscribers that are following my channel already. More videos to come, promise. Dan's energy levels were somewhat revived by the stop. Hi, Mr. CLB. Curving around Corndu here, following the simple grassy track, we returned to our pitch site of last night. On our way back, Mr. CLB and I talked quite a bit about the second night out and whether a warden would find us and what would then happen. I'm not saying we were particularly worried or even feeling that we were doing something really wrong. It was just that we both liked doing the very best thing and that being out to enjoy the lovely outdoors, not spoiling the place or causing any problems for others was right. With all this in mind, we were both happy to pitch up for a second night. We were keen, though, to find an off-trail location where we were less likely to interfere with anybody walking past. Onwards a little further, we looked at the obelisk with the engraved story about little Tommy Jones's last few hours of his life back in 1900. I was here last summer and then there were some painted pebbles and a little brio train left at the foot of the stone, but all these have since been cleared away, sadly. We found an area of flat ground out of the wind and off the track and hoped we were not going to be disturbed by anyone walking past. Yeah. Have you drunk enough water? No idea. I must have done because I've done the whole litre. Plus I don't know if you want to get through meals. I do, so yeah. I need more. I've been sipping from my two-litre thing. The sky turned really dark, so we hurried on with the setting up of tents and getting some dinner on the go. Dan's nature hike, Cloud Up 2, was excellent, I think. The level of shelter he had from it, with the porch facing away from the wind, seemed very good, although there isn't much of an inner porch area for use if it rained a lot. My Hilleberg Acto has another outing again today. Just before dusk, the winds picked up again and the hail pelted us for an hour or so. The temperature dropped to minus 2.4 centigrade, so we spent most of the time in our tent out of the weather, chatting about the route. The stunning sunset concluded the day very well indeed.
up at just before 5am in the morning again, I managed to find a higher spot to stand my camera to catch the sunrise. It was a cold start to the day. No snow, but the ground was crispy hard. We have a plan. Up and packed by 7, back at the car by 9, and munching a Mackie D's breakfast by 9.30. Possible if we don't spend too long on the videoing. <laughs> We regained the path back down to the Story Arm Centre and headed off to cross the river again to get back yes. to the car. If you've liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button and a brief comment from you would be lovely too. I try and reply to all. Thanks for watching and bye for now.